Hey guys, this is Echo Soundworks, and you're checking out a silent video on ADSR Sounds. So this video, we're just going to be talking about the new kind of layout features and just some of the new features in Silent version or Silent One version 3.0. Uh, version 3.0 was actually released in late September, but there was a big issue. I believe it's called Error Code 22, where it wouldn't install and open up on a uh, on for certain Logic users and certain Mac users using a, a certain running system configuration. So they had to update it to version 3.0, I think it's like 9 or 0.9 or something like that. But don't quote me on that. So that just happened about a week and a half ago. And I wanted to do this video a little bit sooner, but got behind with the holidays. So nonetheless, we're going to be looking at some of the new features inside of Silent. And I'm going to talk about how they actually, I think, help the sound design process. Just not say, oh, this is new, this is new. All right, so the first thing, the first and foremost, is that Silent, uh, version three, Silent 1 version 3.0, that is a mouthful. Um, it is now 64-bit compatible for all of us Mac users. So you don't have to use 32 libs anymore, which is really cool. Now, the, the, the main changes, it's still the same synth. There is Waveforms are all the same, filters, effects, etc. But the main difference is the layout. And it, it's not just for, um, you know, like bells and whistles. It actually helps create sounds quicker and better sounds quicker, which is nice. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But... First thing you'll notice is that this looks really different. And this is a skin that comes with the just stock version 3. The cool thing with version 3 is you can now change the skin. I don't know why more synth developers don't do this because it is nice to be able to change up the look of something if you've used it for a long time, like five, six years. It is nice to change it up because honestly, as weird as this sounds, for me, it's kind of nice to just be like, oh, um, I like looking at what I'm working at, right? Uh, it's why we spend so much money on high resolution monitors these days. So I like to look at things that inspire me and that's why I use the themes or skins with logic. And it's nice to have different options. So let's, if you go to menu, you can go to uh, skin and you can choose these different ones. You can choose classic, which is kind of like the, uh, the old version, but with the new, you see that the fonts are all a little bit different. The LCD is a little bit different. You can go to the default, which is this one right here. It's kind of got a mini Moog look to it, which I'm not a huge fan of, just because um, Silent sounds nothing like a mini Moog, so I don't want to think of it as a mini Moog. I want something that, like to me, represents the synth, which would be very digital looking or digital, you know, to go with the digital sound. So you have the classic. You have the um, I can't say this name, Couch Chuck. I'm I'm probably butchering your name, man, or, and I'm sorry, but I really like this one. It's kind of cool. It's got like a live feel to it, which I like. Um, I like the red and green. It's nice to look at. I think it's pretty easy to look at. And then next you get the, uh, if we go to skin, you get the old school, which is just the old version, which is hideous. <laughs> but I love it. And then you get, I love that they included this one, the, uh, si oh, not this one, but the, um, their Silent 3.0, the the Thackeray. This is this is the hearkening to the name of the guy who made it. His name's Lance Thackeray. I might be butchering his last name, but uh, he made this skin, and this is the one that I was using in the previous version of Silent and he also did the GUI for Serum. So I love this one. I think he's a great, great developer. I, this is my favorite one. But yeah, so that's the first thing that I, that popped out to me is that you have the different skins, which is nice. Um, now next, talking about the skins and kind of just the overall look of the synth, you can resize Silent, which is, which is beautiful. Um, you can actually go down to this little section here, not, not this bottom section with this little arrow right here, and click and make it big. So if you have like a large monitor, or maybe you don't have good eyesight, or maybe you forgot your glasses, right? Uh, it's really cool that you can just resize this. I like, I actually like working with, with it smaller. I don't know why. Um, but if you have a lot of synths, or you have a lot of stuff open on your screen, and you need to be able to see what's going on in the synth, and maybe like visualizing plugins, etc., it's really nice to be able to just make it smaller. So that's really cool. You can go to menu, and you can go to size, and you can do, it'll say free, and then you can do 100%, which will just take it back to 100%. So... I think that is pretty awesome. More synths should do that because it's more of a customizable thing for a user experience. Now, the menu, everything else is pretty much the uh, same. You have bank, you have preset, where you have load, all that sort of stuff, bank. It's pretty much the same. Um, you have about, it'll tell you, you know, the actual version. So this is uh, 3.009. All right, so that is, um, and you can see Lance Thacker, right? So that's the main change in the menu section. But you'll notice that with the the um, effects here, it's all the same effects, all the same thing. But you'll notice that some of the 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 parts of the synth are more intuitive. For instance, when I go to click on Wave, I now get a drop down menu, which is amazing. 
because you don't just have you don't you, you can't scroll now like you could on the old version. So on the old version, to cycle through the waves, you'd click, hold, and scroll up or down with your mouse, and it would take you through to the different waveforms. It could get kind of tedious if you're on a laptop or if you're on your mouse sticks or something. So it's really nice that you can just drop down and go. Now with the voices, you'll notice that the voices remain the same. It's just you scroll up or down to to uh, accommodate the amount of voices that you want. But everything else is going to be the same here. You, you have the, uh, instead of the, co another change is in the old version, you had C slash P. Now you have a drop down where you can initialize, which is really cool, or you can do copy and paste. So if you want to copy oscillator A1 to oscillator A2, you could do that. So we can go up here, you can go copy, go to here, you go paste, and now it's all there. So that's pretty cool. Um, you have that instead of the CP. You have all that, that little drop down menu, and you have copy, paste, init, which is really nice. All right, moving down, uh, same thing with the filters. The filters used to be a scrolling, kind of a you move up or down to choose your filter. Now you have a drop-down menu, bypass, low-pass, bandpass, high-pass. Um, and then you can choose the oscillators like that as well. So basically any drop-down menu is improved or changed a little bit. So if we, go to, um, if we go down here, now this is one of the biggest changes, and this is one of the coolest changes for me. It, in your modulation or your envelopes, the modulation envelope section, you used to just have this long ass lit list, and it was it was terrible. Like, it was terrible because it was tedious to try to find what you were doing, but it also kind of just lumped everything together. And from a sound design perspective, I think that's very confusing. This is one reason why I like since like Serum or Massive, where you have the drag and drop modulation, because it, it's a whole different thought process when you're trying to do a modulation process when you're thinking about the musicality of the sound, not being like, oh, where's this in this b big menu? So what I mean by that is if I click here now, you'll see where it's, it's, it's in three different sections. It's in the oscillators, the filters, the miscellaneous, and it's just laid out much better. So you have volume, you have pitch, you have phase, you have pan, you have pan A and B. So they're even laid out in the three individual sections here, these, these columns, these little columns. Um, it's actually laid out in, I think, uh, in a really w good way. So you have volume, which, you know, dynamics. Then you have pitch, which is the tune of the sound. Then you have phase, which is going to be kind of alter the perceived feeling of the sound. Then you have the pan, which is the imaging, right? So Then filters, you have cutoff. So it's really nice because now I can be like, oh, I need more punch for my filter, right? Cutoff, filter. It, it's immediate. It makes it a little bit quicker. And it just, anytime, if there's some part of the process that's too tedious, most people, myself included, will some of us will shy away from it or, you know, we'll save that to last or we'll kind of, begrudgingly go through it. So it's nice that it's all there. And then this last category, this miscellaneous, this is just where you can do some interesting things like the LFOs, the distortion amount, the phaser frequency, etc. So you get these, you have these uh, drop down menus on the LFOs as well. Um, so yeah, it's basically just a lot clearer and quicker, I think, to get to everything inside of Silent. Now another really awesome change I want to talk about is if I go to the menu, we will uh, go to Let's go to preset bank. We'll go to load. We'll go load bank. And let's load up a bank here. All right, so this is really cool. Now, instead of all of it having an, a drop down where it's just scrolling, 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 it'll show you everything in the bank at once, which is really nice. So if you want to get to the leads now, because that was always one of the issues I had with, with creating banks on silent compared to some other synths with browsers and things like that, was that if I had like 15, 20 bases base patches like right here I have I have 37 bases 36 bases in this uh, preset bank you'd have to scroll down to get to the lead so if you want to get to a lead or a pluck you have to scroll for a while so now you can just see you know if the presets are named correctly or named well you can just go and be like okay I want to pluck let's let's see what we got here right uh, and then actually just see and play the sound you don't have to scroll <laughs> Which is really nice. Then you say, okay, I need to go to a base. You just go right back to the base. So basically everything is the same. It's just a little bit more, uh, it's a good amount more efficient. Um, the changes to the skins, the themes are really nice. The resizing is really nice. The drop down selection menus are really nice. The changes just overall with appearance, I think, are helpful to the synth. But that's pretty much everything that's going on with the new version. And of course, it's 64-bit compatible now. And they've also improved some things under the hood as well. But the main things that you'll notice using it uh, would be those the things we just talked about in the video. All right, guys, if you have any questions or comments, post them up below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.